Hey guys, welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to show you the unboxing, build, test and the review of TiVo Tornado. So stay tuned. Alright, first things first, let's deal with the box. Not the sharpest knife that I have around, but it will do the job. Inside the box we have after sale card with a manual, which I recommend to read. This nice thick protection foam did a great job and protect all components and nothing was damaged. Package is divided into the two sections, we have a top and down section. Down section include bottom frame with heated bed and the top section include top part of the frame, control box, tools and rest of the components. Very much the same like CR10. I like how the TiVo is packaged at 3D printers, nice and secure. Heated bed is secured with the cable ties so you need to cut them and free it. Looks like we have the first test print on the heated bed, it looks cool. This heated bed is not aluminum plate like on the CR10 and most of 3D printers. This is actually tempered glass plate with a silicone heater on and on top of it there is a thick insulation. Awesome. More in package you're gonna find. Frame parts, spare parts with micro SD card and cable ties, tools, heat bed adjusting screws, USB cable, filament removable tool, AC cable and spare TiVo build tech. And this overview completes our unboxing. And now it's time for assembling, let's do it. First you need to mount the heated bed with these four screws with the springs on, unscrew them first and insert bolts through the holes on the glass plate on each corner. Then add springs underneath one by one and when you get all four in a place screw them down with adjusting nut. My heated bed was already pre-adjusted so I didn't need to adjust the roller bearings for heated bed. But if you need to, there is a three adjusting nuts underneath. Look in the manual how to adjust them. It's pretty easy. This four heated bed adjusting nut with the springs needs to be screwed down around in a half spring load. Later on you will find adjust them when you level your printer, so there is no worry about them now. Next we need to install the top of the frame. Just gently drop top of the frame down to the matching holes in bottom frame. Be careful here, do not drop frame on the edges of glass, you might broke it or damage it. Then take these four screws and gently hold the top of the frame with one arm and insert the bolt into the holes and screw them down. When you finish one side, repeat the same on other side. Make sure they are nice and tight. Now we need to install the frame brackets. The left one have the micro switch on it, that's your Z stop switch. Screw it nicely, do not over tight it. And the right one without any switch goes to right side. So just screw it down. Now this next step is a very important and is not written in a manual. The filament teflon tube is a way too long and this adds extra stress on the cables and the extruder and lowers the print quality. So slide the X carriage all the way to the end rail and cut the extra length. Then insert the teflon tube in the extruder. X carriage should have a nice slide and free without too much force. Looks good, we can continue. And now let's see what is inside the control box. I already see some new components and there is this AC relay next to the case fan who will heat up the glass bed very fast because it's run on AC power instead of DC like on other 3D printers. Power supply for the rest of the components is 24 volt, 8.5 amp, silent type. Control box fans are connected to the temperature sensor so they are not spinning all the time. They only spins depend on the load and the temperature which is great. And all the wires are nicely isolated so no problem. Next part is a cable installation. There is a two main plug for the hot end and for heated bed. They are physically different so you can't plug them wrong. All other cables endings have a label on so you can't miss it. I plug is going to the back of the frame. E plug is going to the extruder. 
and X plug is going to the X carriage. Now put the printer on the flat surface and make sure that all feet resting on the table evenly and then recheck all the frame screws on front and on the back of the frame and make sure they are nice and tight and don't forget the top ones. And now I want to mention the few money savings on this printer, for example these corners are pretty sharp and there is no caps on them. Cable tubes are hard and not that flexible. On the control box there is a few holes for contrast adjusting reset button and beeper. I guess this is just cosmetic but still. And there is no spool holder supply with this kit, so you have to print a new one or use for some other 3D printer. And now it's time for the first start. Tornado is on. Silent tornado. No sound from the fans, nothing. Awesome. And now let's run some specs and do the overview. Tornado has a full metal frame, very much like CR10. Build volume is 300 by 300 by 400 mm. X carriage has a cover with a full metal hot end with two fans and it can reach 260 degrees. Heated bed is a temperate glass with a built tech, powered by 530 watt AC silicon heater with heat bed isolation material underneath and it can reach 135 degrees in less than 5 minutes. All X, I and Z movements are made on V-slots aluminum extrusions on which are rolling V-type bearing wheels which are much quieter than a classic linear bearings. Tivo Tornado has a Titan clone Bowden extruder which is great for all types of filament including the flexible one and changing the filament is a very easy as well. Control box has dual auto load fans and in the front there is a big graphic LCD with reset micro switch and LCD contrast adjuster. On the left side there is exhaust fan, place for SD card and USB. And on the back of the control box there is an AC socket switch with a fuse. And that's pretty much completes our hardware overview. And now let's go to the software overview. Here like always I will show you all the settings and the options in the menu that you can change. Scrolling up is responsive and easy to scroll with. Firmware is a very similar like on the CR10 and there is a lot of changes that you can customize on Tornado, especially in a motion section. You can find adjust velocity, acceleration, jerk, steps and so on, which is very good. And now it's time for the bed leveling and test prints. But before that, make sure that you heat up the nozzle from white PLA filament from the factory test. For leveling, first do the auto home and then go to custom commands, click on the front left and the printer will make the first level point. Then, using the adjusting nut exactly on that corner, confirm the distance with the A4 paper. Make sure that the nozzle is just above the glass plate. Then, run the same procedure to other spots. Nozzle should not rub against the build tech. And great thing about this heated bed is that I'm made from the glass and the glass is perfectly flat. That makes leveling so simple and the life much easier because sometimes huge aluminum heated bed can bow in the middle when they are hot or when they cool down, but the glass is always flat regardless of temperature. And now it's time for the first test print and that is hollow test cube without the top 20x20. 20 20. This is always my first test print, it's easy and fast and this simply and fast test print can give quite a lot of information about your 3D printer. For example, you can check how accurate dimensions are on every axis, how good is the feed rate, how good layers are, is there any imperfections, layer separation, is there noise in a print, salmon skin, other print artifact, how good the corners are, how good the cooling is, is the fan blowing on the right direction, and so on. Of course, 3D Benji will show up even more information and feedback on how good your 3D printer is and that will be my next print, after this simply test cube. For printing this test cube I'm using the latest version of Cura, which using the different 3D printing pattern, so instead of classic Z-hop when the printer should shift in an X Z layer, previous version of Cura was doing that on an external wall, which is visible and that can leave a small marks on the walls. But this latest version shifts on the next Z layer inside the cube and then moves to another side inside the cube for the next Z layer. This actually leaves no visible spot on the external walls but it leaves filament left over inside the cube. This is actually very good for printing some closed 3D models but not so good for the models without the top like this hollow cube, vases or similar. This is why I'm using the both versions of Cura, the latest one and the old one for combining for the best printing scenario. Of course you can use other slices as well. Alright, the printing is done, let's check our test cube. This is that new printing pattern in the latest version of Cura like I just mentioned. Let me just fix the focus first. Well, I will say that the cube looking very good. 
cooling are good, edges are nice. There is no separation, but I think I see the small salmon skin artifact. Let's print the 3D Benji, he will tell us more. And yes, I was right. Exactly like on the Tivo Little Monster, Tornado is also showing the similar salmon skin artifact because of these stepper drivers. And don't pay any attention to the visible support inside the print. This PLA is very transparent and I use only two parameters on the wall. Let's print one more 3D Benji in less transparent filament and then check the results. On this black PLA we can definitely see much better now. All edges and details are actually very good and the print quality is great, but Salmon Skin artifact is definitely visible. This issue can be solved simply by adding two teal smoothers boards on X and I stepper drivers. This is the result when I installed them on my Tornado after I finished this review. This is just quick comparison with the smoothers on and off. If you wanna know how to install them on the Tornado, please check my video about the quality upgrades for my TiVo Little Monster. It's the same procedure. And just for the record, all other prints in this video review was printed without any mods or any TL smoothers on my Tornado. This dragon from Luby 3 d printed at 40mm a second on 0.1mm layer height shows fantastic results and details. Here, Summer Skin artifacts actually add a nice texture to the dragon, especially on the wings, who looks now more realistic like actual skin. I think that this artifact actually looks very nice on this dragon. Now let's print the Watchtower from Thingiverse in 0.1mm layer height and see what results we're gonna get. Printing is now done and... Look at this. This print looks beautiful. The level of details on this 3D model is amazing. Tornado did awesome job printing this model and all these small stairs and tiny bricks looks fantastic. Even those even smaller bricks on the walls are there, tiny windows and roof looking great. You can even see that this is 3D printed actually. How good it is. My next print, our singing dragon from Luby 3D, printed again with 40mm a second and 0.1mm layer height. Printing temperature here was 195 degrees on a hot end and 55 on heated bed. Results? Fantastic. Just look at these layers. They are simply amazing. All the details are visible. Titan Extruder did a great job here and there is no stringer or nothing. Cooling is a perfect and I'm very impressed with the quality of this print. Even lower body parts printed without any support turn out great. I have no complaints, this is awesome result. Now let's print some vase. This is a curved honeycomb vase by Eggnot from Thingverse. And if you're planning to print this model, you have to know that the Cura will have problems slicing this model. These vase are printed with 0.2mm layer height, print temperature was 195.55 and print speed was 50mm a second and the travel was 100. I just used the two parameters on the wall and with this washout PLA I was able to get pretty good results. I still not clean inside of the vase but I should will. Printing this in a darker filament sliced it with the Cura will show even more missing layers on walls. But even so I like the design of this model and I might print it again with some other slicer to compare results. Now let's print some rocket and test the full height at the same time. For printing this rocket I lowered the print temperature to 190 degrees and I lowered the cooling fan to just 50% to make sure that high airflow will not cause steel walls to wobble and the results? Well, you do the judging. I think it look perfect. This 3.2 version of Cura in a vase mode did a great job here hiding the Z-Hope and the color of this cheap PLA filament is a good too. All edges of entire rocket look fantastic and there is no imperfection even on the rocket wings. Top of the rocket turn out great too. Now let's print some nice design vase but this time in black PLA and see what results we gonna get. I print the vase exactly in the same print settings like the previous rocket. And Tornado did fantastic job here. And here is a vase in close up. Look at this vase, it looks fantastic. And just under very bright light and in the special angle you can still see the small salmon skin artifact, it's very noticeable. And I think the quality of this vase is a great. And inside is totally clean, so there is no need for cleaning. Great. And now before the speed test, let's print this amazing 3D model of Grot from Thingverse. And Tornado shows fantastic results. The level of details printed in this gold PLA on the 40mm a second and 0.1mm layer height is so good that I can't even see the layers no more. Even in a close-up. 
This is awesome results and I cannot even believe how well Tornado print out this model and even feeling under the fingers is just unreal. I think this is the best high detail print that I ever printed so far. This is printed in 3 shell parameters with zero infill and no support and even the chin which requires support is looking very good. I'm very impressed with these results. And now the speed test. Let's print my favorite mobile stand. Here is a tornado printing my favorite mobile stand at 100 mm a second print speed on inner and out walls and 200 mm a second travel speed. With the small foam pieces under the each leg of the frame, I was able to reach average 43 dB from approximately 1 meter from tornado, printing at very high speed. And now let's see the results. If I can take it off. Got it. Well, mobile stands looks very good. Actually, I have no layer separation. The surface is smooth, feed rate is great. The edges looks very nice too. Let me just try to zoom in here so we can see a little bit better. I think I see the small layer here in the middle. It's very noticeable and this is under the zoom and the flash. All right, let's just check the bottom corner. Here we can see some small imperfection, but considering the size and the mass of the glass heated bed, I would say this is very good results on such a high printing speed. And the final test is the bed heat up time. And this is the part where TiVo Tornado is simply rocks and put all 3D printers that I test so far on the side. With the heated bed running on AC and with a 530 watts of power, it can reach 50 degrees under a minute and in a 4.5 minutes tops out at 135 degrees. This is the most impressive heat up time that I ever saw. And I don't know even one 3D printer on the market in this and even the higher price range that can beat these insane results. One thing to mention is that if you go over 120 degrees, build tech will take the damage. So if you're planning to print at maximum heated bed temperature, make sure you take off the build tech and clean it up and you can print straight on the glass without problem. Well guys, I think the TiVo Tornado is a very impressive 3D printer. On some test prints it show great and on other impressive print results. With a rigid metal frame, huge build volume, perfectly flat glass plate, tighten extruder, auto load fan control, extra settings in a firmware and insane bad heat up time, Tornado is to my opinion great choice for this price range. Adding 10 more bucks for the TL smoothers and extra 50 minutes to work to install them gives the Tornado print quality of much more expensive 3D printer. And guys, there you have it. That was my full review of the TiVo Tornado. If you like to order this 3D printer, please have a look in the links in the video description. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I catch you next time. Bye bye.